Welcome to another episode of the Chicks on the Right podcast with our friend and sponsor of the show, Zach Abraham from Bulwark Capital Management. Zach, there is a lot going on. I don't know if you've realized (laughs) how busy things are. But in particular, um, in light of the debate that we just had recently, there's a lot of chitter chatter about Trump and his plans for tariffs, uh, which, of course, Democrats are saying that's going to raise prices for everyone like they care about that all of a sudden. We want to know your take on the tariffs. And we also want to find out what you think about all these strikes, the port strikes. Yeah. You know, my thoughts on the tariffs aren't um, and I and I took some heat on this one. So. My my thoughts on the tariffs aren't that different from the first round of tariffs Trump did when he was in office, which is everybody throws a fit because in economics classes, we're taught that tariffs are bad, right? And they are to a certain extent, meaning if you have two countries trading with each other and one slaps on tariffs, first of all, that cost gets put directly onto the shoulders of the consumer, right? And then the other country is going to answer with tariffs and you get a trade war going and it's not beneficial to anybody. OK, but here's the part they always left. They always they always left out and they always leave out. They're acting as if we're doing this on our own volition. China tariffs us. China tariffs tariffs us. They artificially suppress the value of their currency. They've done that in the past. Now they're trying to artificially inflate it. Um, but they're playing all these games. When you answer back with a tariff, you're effectively reinstituting fair trade. So. If they're tariffing our goods and we're not answering back, that's idiotic. <laughs> it's just it, it's just stupid. Now, the other thing is, and I think that this would be eventually good for both countries, but China isn't looking for a solution that's good for both countries. They're only looking. And I just wish our politicians would be a little bit more like that. Right? Well, Trump did. Well, Trump, yeah. that's what precisely what Trump, he's like. They're punching us. We got to punch back, which is well, why a lot of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when you don't, all you're right. doing is transferring that money directly into the pockets of the PBOC and the and the CCP. Totally. It, it, it's ridiculous. So the mm-hmm. whole debate to me is a joke. Like they're acting as they're it, they're acting like it's this uh, autonomous move that Trump's just pulling off and you're like he's responding in kind. That's mm-hmm. what you should do. And right. I remember the first round everybody was going, "Oh, fair trade. What's he doing?" Da, da, da. And I was and I said the same thing back then. I went, "Hey guys, this is this is a step closer to fair trade. Okay, that it just is. That's what it is. So the whole thing to me, I, I feel like it's sort of a any po- any politician that doesn't advocate for tariffs on China is either economically illiterate or I've got to really question their motives. Because yeah, you want it from you want it from a politician. You want it from a friendship. You want it from a financial advisor. You want somebody to advocate for you. You know, yeah. they have your back, basically. Well, yeah, and yeah. it's and it's not like we're trying to stick it to the people in China. We're answering yeah. in kind, and mm-hmm. to not do that. So the, the situation you've got right now is, first of all, China has we've effectively been exporting our inflation to China, and they've benefited from it, right? All the manufacturing jobs. On top of that. And they know, they know exactly what they're doing. They know that they've been the biggest beneficiary from quote unquote globalization than any country on the face of the earth. And in response to that, then they're hitting us with tariffs in addition. Like it's just, it, it's, it's complete nonsense. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I would love to have a world where there weren't. Okay. But that, that's not really our call. China, China, they, this is the game that China started and, and to not respond in kind is stupid. Yeah. Well, will that help? Like, I mean, will tariffs help make companies just do stuff here because this is you know we've been talking to, uh, about our uh, on our show about the port strikes and just how infuriating that whole situation is and we showed a video the other day during our show of china's ports and how they operate completely automated right and like it's incredible yeah and it just it made us so mad about how entitled and greedy and just jerky these longshore especially the boss that harold daggett guy yeah like he's so awful and so would would tariffs like do those things kind of play together where putting tariffs on china would ultimately help keep more more manufacturing in the united states because there'd be an incentive to do that and then would there also then be an incentive to maybe you know, not rely on these people so much because how, why do they want to stop progress? This is what I don't get about the long term. I get that they want to keep jobs, but like they're doing it at the expense of our entire country. And right. see, I feel like, I feel like they're doing it. They don't care. 
about our, they just care about themselves. Like it's a selfish motive. Well, I mean, if you listen to the words Daggett used, like we'll hurt you or, you know, the, the word, the vernacular, you we'll the crush you. Use, yeah. yeah. We'll crush you. You're sitting there going, who's you? Right. Are you talking about, are you talking about the rest of your countrymen? Wait, yeah. That's right. Cool? And you okay. live here too. Yeah. You live and, here. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the whole thing, like, uh, the, the, the unions, the, the unions to me are, are, are kind of one of those things where, first of all, I think people should be able to, should be free to form unions. I think that's an economic expression of freedom. Um, I don't think that most of the time they're particularly useful. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, there are situations in which they are. Um, I think a lot of companies bring union formation on themselves, meaning, um, if you treat people the right way now, eventually you can get entitlement and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and people will push that direction anyway, sometimes, but you know, there's several different studies of companies. You look at a company like Lincoln electric. Okay. They make small electric motors. They've never been unionized. And one of the reasons they've never been unionized is because they're every single employee that works for them. We actually modeled Bulwark after the, off of that model, but every company that works for them, a, a good, and I'm talking 25 to 40% of their annual salary is based on incentive bonuses. Right. And so they just tell them, they're like, hey, look, you can make more money this way, but it's going to be tied to your productivity or you can get paid less and be in a union. And the people are always like, you know, no, you know, we're good. And so in a lot of ways, this to me is what the liberals, especially the far left, have done for so long, which is they've been like feeding and growing this monster in a cage. And mm -hmm. eventually the monster was going to get out and bite them and they were going to be able to control it. And I think that the unions are kind of an example of that, right? Because they have kowtowed to the unions for so long because it's baked in political support. It's baked right. in political funding um, and they've gotten out of control. And, and it's really easy to see when a union is ec is basically threatening economic terrorism because that's yeah. kind of what it is. Yes. Okay, now you're not doing good to anybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, now, we, like, and I'm not advocating for like any type of violent action or anything like that, but in a way you're becoming a domestic enemy of, totally. of the underlying economy. Right. Yeah. So now do the two interplay? Sure. Right. Like do, do, but everybody's like, Oh, tariffs are going to cause inflation. And I'm like, well, where were you on the inflation reduction act? <laughs> like Now all of a sudden you care about it. Mm -hmm. um, may, by the way, mayor Pete put out a tweet the other day where he's like, uh, you know, we passed the Inflation Reduction Act 18 months ago or whatever he said. And he goes, and isn't it unbelievable that inflation is down? And I'm sitting there going, because oh my God. You're, you're, and you're sitting there going, dude, it's because you had the biggest and fastest interest rate increase in history. Oh my God. Okay, like it God. Had, if anything, the reason that inflation still has a pulse is because of the Inflation Reduction mm -hmm. Act. And it just, it, the truth just doesn't matter here. Right now. Do, do the tariffs, will they increase inflation a little bit? Sure, right? Those prices will get passed on to consumers. Do, is what's going on in the port increase inflation? Yeah, if, if it was allowed to go on, it would, mm -hmm. right? Um, but here's the question, right? Th this is the other thing that is so infuriating to me about modern political discussion. You act as if there's a good and bad idea, whereas we as adults understand that everything is a cost-benefit analysis. Every decision we make is going to have a benefit and it's going to have a cost. If you're advocating for no tariffs on China, then what you are advocating for is another 20 to 30 year run of the complete desolation and dismantling of what is now referred to as the Rust Belt, right? Used to be the Bible Belt. Now it's the Rust Belt. Why? All the manufacturing jobs left. So what I would say in a scenario like that is all inflation is not made equal. So for instance, if you brought all of those jobs back, or let's say you brought 40% of those jobs back, okay, that's going to be a big boon to the underlying economy, right? Consumers are going to have more money. What I would argue, and I think it's really easy to argue this, is that any inflation that was realized by those tariffs would be more than made up for in the economic gains that you'd get. And, and, and look, the, the way that we've gone about doing this, just letting China loot our working class and loot our manufacturing base, it's insane. There's yeah. no benefit from it other than it's created a lot more billionaires. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they can double their margins, right? They move over, they pay slave wages in China, import the stuff back in to sell to our consumers. 
and and it really is it, it, it's pulling the 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 supports out from underneath what a free market capitalism or capitalist society is supposed to is supposed to function on right like mm -hmm. you sell the goods in the markets in which you employ people yes there, right so th there's a feedback loop there the money you're making is going back to employing people well what a lot of american corporations did is they just cut out the middleman yep. they said hey we still want to be able to sell to the richest consumer base in the world, the U.S. consumer. Mm -hmm. We just don't want to pay them to generate yep. the, the product, right? And I'd look at them and go, hey, we're a free society. That's fine. You want to do that? You're more than free to do it. But here's the catch. We're mm -hmm. going to tariff your stuff, mm -hmm. right? So I, I was still under the illusion that the Democrats were the party of the working man. And <laughs> Yeah, that's not true anymore. No. <laughs> it, I know, right? It, this is the clearest example mm -hmm. of it. Every blue collar worker in this entire country should be sitting there going, uh, wait a second, what do they want to do? Well, they, they <laughs> should be, but it's like, but that narrative has been so ingrained in their brains. I mean, it's like been so pounded into them that, oh, the Democrats are the party of you. And that's not necessarily, but they're waking up. I think a lot of, a lot of them, even the unions, I think a lot of the union folks are waking up and they're like, wait, these aren't our people. Right. Like the yeah. Teamsters still haven't announced somebody for president, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they haven't announced anybody. They haven't announced an endorsement because they've announced an endorsement. Right. The, the mm. Teamsters union just don't like what the, what the members of the union have to say. Exactly. Which is, again, another example of unions not representing the interests of their members, mm -hmm. right? You look at a guy like Daggett that's never actually made anything in his entire life, but he's making 900 grand driving Bentleys and yachts. Has, has a yacht. Oh. oh my God, it's infuriating. Right. Yeah. So when he says that we're stopping the port to support work, no, he's not. He's stopping the port to, to secure his bag, right? He's stopping the port to make sure that he's stuck in the middle and he continues to get paid 10x what his average union member makes. That, mm -hmm. That's what he's doing, right? Yeah. This isn't an interest. What he's also doing, especially in the age of AI, and like Mock pointed out, go look at how go look at how China's running their ports. What he's doing is he's expediting the elimination of the unions completely. That's what he's really doing. And if the left can, how does he not down see that? How, how does he not? I mean, because if anything, this should this should make companies want to automate even harder and even faster because they don't want to have to deal with bullshit like this. Yeah. And so, I can't. I mean, how much can they? Do, what do you expect is going to happen from this? Because I do worry that they're demanding. It's not just the seventy-seven percent raise they're demanding. They're saying no absolutely automation. no automation right. whatsoever. That right. has to be in the contract. Can they? I mean, can that happen where they actually stop progress just to enrich themselves? Yeah, when everybody else in every other country across – everybody else is saying yes to progress or they're already there, which right. is crazy. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean it, 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 it's a completely irrational position and the only yeah. reason – the only reason he's taking it is – look, if, if we look around society right now or we look around the economy or we just look around our government, th there's all of these things that if you're looking through the lens of just normal people – that don't make sense. And for instance, look at the border policy, right? Mm -hmm. Like what you're sitting there, like you're going, wait, wait, wait a second. Kind to people. If that's kind, then why don't we all get rid of our front doors? Right. right. What? We got to come up with a solution. We got to come up with an answer to this that actually makes sense because all the answers we're listening to don't. Right. Well, if you understand George Soros and the whole free society movement that he pushes, then things start to fall in line. And I think that Daggett is kind of one of those lackeys that, mm -hmm. Like, why are you doing something that's going to harm you? Because as long as these folks are in line with those in power at the top of the heap, they've been told they're going to be fine, right? Yeah. Like, it's the only thing that makes sense because what they're doing isn't economically rational. It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. Why would we want 15 million people that we don't even know who they are pouring into our country every year? Yep. Well, it's because if, if you believe that the world should resemble John Lennon's song, no war and no religions and no government, then, then that's what you'd do, right? You'd get mm -hmm. rid of sovereign lines and you'd create a one world government. And so that makes sense. People are like, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. And I go, no, it's not. Go read George Soros' website. Go read what he's after. Go look at how many things he funds. It's you don't planned. Think yeah. yeah. You don't think these people are influenced by the billions of dollars he throws around? Mm -hmm. Absolutely they are. Right. And that's why they'll make these decisions that on the surface – look completely uneconomically rational and you're scratching your head. But if you put it in that context, then it makes a lot of sense. You're like, oh, this is all, you know, this is all making sense here. It's all evening out. It's strategery. 
<laughs> yeah, big time. It, to quote Rush, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it's all it's strategery. Same mm -hmm. thing going on at the ports. It's uh, it's mm -hmm. what you what you are effectively doing is you are giving a tunnel into or you're giving a look through into how potentially unnecessary those jobs are in the, in the not too distant future. Yeah. So you're actually jeopardizing those people. Yeah. Um, yep. And it's just, God, yeah. it's just, it's crazy. I'm sure you, you are probably spending a bunch of time on these topics on your own radio show. Where can people listen? Yeah. So know your risk radio podcast. Uh, just Google it We're on all the different podcast websites. We do our daily dots, which is a daily update of everything that's gone on economically and, and politically that has to do with the markets and the economy. And, uh, yeah, just Google Know Your Risk Radio, Know Your Risk Radio podcast. We're pretty easy to find. All right. Thank you, awesome. Zach. Thanks, Zach. Thank you, ladies. Fun as always. <laughs> Investment advisory services offered through Trek Financial LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. The opinions expressed in this program are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security. Any references to performance of securities are thought to be materially accurate and actual performance may differ. Investments involve risk and are not guaranteed. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Trek 24308.